Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about peripheral factors and neuromuscular fatigue. Um, so in fatigue in general, in muscular fatigue that happens during exercise, uh, we have to consider what's happening in the actual muscle tissue itself. So the failure of the contractile apparatus of the muscle tissue. Uh, then there are peripheral neuromuscular fatigue factors, which is what I'm going to discuss here, and then central neuromuscular fatigue factors, which I will discuss in my next video. Uh, so changes in the nervous system during fatigue might influence the efficacy or pattern of activation. Um, so it's not simply the muscle getting tired or the muscle running out of calcium or ATP or, or whatever resources, um, but it's also significantly affected by the changes that happen in the nervous system, whether on purpose or by design of running out of resources. Uh, so factors that are taking place inside of the muscle, so intramuscular factors. Um, so during contractile activity, especially ongoing contractile activity that's causing fatigue, there are changes in several different metabolites, so like calcium, hydrogen ions, and several others. Um, and so those changes in those metabolites that are produced during that ongoing contraction, produced or changed during the ongoing contraction, um, has a few effects on how the muscle is able to actually contract. So it slows down contractile speed. It influences how many cross bridges can be formed at any one time. And it influences how much force each cross bridge is able to generate. Uh, so we're changing essentially how much force is able to be produced and it's slowing down the speed of contraction. Um, so when we put those factors together, we consider all of those changes. We also see a significant change in the force velocity relationship during fatigue. So if we look at this graph on the right, uh, that solid dark line is showing a normal force velocity curve. Um, so we're saying that as velocity of contraction increases, the force we can produce as a result decreases. Um, but fatigue uh, increases the curvature of the force velocity relationship, which dramatically decreases the power. Okay, so here is a muscle that is fatigued and we see a very different force velocity relationship. So it's steeper, there's more of a curve. Um, and there's uh, less force being able to be produced at uh, lower velocity. Okay, so uh, neuromuscular transmission failure. Uh, what we mean by that is failure of nervous impulses to be translated into an impulse on the sarcolemma at the neuromuscular junction. So when an action potential uh, that's coming from the motor neuron is not successfully transmitted to generate an action potential in the muscle fiber. Uh, so that we would call neuromuscular transmission failure. In the process, we'd call neuromuscular transmission. And so when that goes wrong, then it's failure. Um, so there are many components of neuromuscular transmission that adapt to offset fatigue. Okay, so there are lots of different parts of this process that one might adapt to compensate for failure of another. So it's not totally clear um, how neuromuscular transmission actually fails and whether it fails, um, but there are three potential mechanisms that have been hypothesized and demonstrated in animal studies and in some um, human studies in some cases. Uh, but one potential mechanism is the depletion of the neurotransmitter. So. Um, in the case of the neuromuscular junction, the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. Um, so after many impulses have been transmitted over time, we would be depleted in um, acetylcholine. And so with less acetylcholine available, we would have less ability to transmit the impulse from the neuron to the muscle fiber. Uh, then there's also uh, postsynaptic membrane failure is another possibility. Uh, so that's the acetylcholine receptors that are on the motor end plate of the sarcolemma would become desensitized to the acetylcholine that is being released from the uh, motor neuron. And then finally, um, this is the least likely uh, scenario here, but failure of axon branches to pass on action potentials. 
Um, so that would be if the action potential is not propagated into all of the smaller branches so that all those branches that are reaching out to the uh, muscle fiber, if they're not transmitting the action potential, um, then there would not be neuromuscular transmission. So it, it probably plays a small role, if any role at all. It's more likely, and it's been demonstrated to a greater extent, that it's depletion of acetylcholine and or desensitization of the acetylcholine receptors. All right, so there's a concept called muscle wisdom, um, and it's the gradual decline in muscle activation during fatigue uh, that we see as a decrease in the firing frequency of motor units during rhythmic or sustained effort. Um, so muscle fibers are contracting more slowly as we talked about with the intramuscular factors, uh, that speed of contraction is slowing down. So muscle fibers are contracting more slowly and to sustain the maximal uh, muscle contraction in that state, it requires lower frequencies. Um, so it's actually more efficient to have a lower or a slower uh, firing rate to maintain the same amount of maximal force. Uh, so the most efficient way to maintain maximal force is a continual gradual reduction in firing rate. Um, so it, this was termed muscle wisdom because it's thought that the neuromuscular system is being wise uh, by um, selectively decreasing the firing rate. So intentionally decreasing firing rate um, to maintain the most efficient um, maximal force in the muscle possible. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. And thanks so much for watching.